I'm Eleanor Ingersoll, president of QVNA. This evening, we're talking about the city's outdoor dining permitting process. We are joined tonight by Mark Squilla, Councilman First District, Alan Dom, Councilman at Large, Rich Montanez, Deputy Commissioner of Transportation, also known as Streets Department, Aaron Santamore, Chief of Staff for Councilman Dom, and Mike Harris, Executive Director of the South Street Headhouse District. This meeting is being recorded and will be available later this week on the QVNA homepage. We are also streaming live on Facebook. Your questions are welcomed in the chat feature and easier to see if comments are kept relevant. Philadelphia is not only a tourist destination for its history, but also a must visit for foodies far and wide. So it's no wonder that residents have become spoiled and protective of all those options. Innovations and standards by restaurateurs and chefs in this city are recognized nationally. Queen Village can proudly call its own two chefs nominated for the James Beard Awards. One, Jesse Ito of Royal Itzakaya at Second and Fulton, and Katnip Nock Centurion of Goliath Thai Kitchen. Now, though that's in Bella Vista at Ninth and Catherine, she is a Queen Village resident. We also want to give props to Christina Martinez of South Philadelphia Barbacoa, also in uh, Bella Vista. So it's no surprise with all of this that with the crushing setback of the pandemic, efforts were made within City Hall to buoy the industry. We have a brief timeline review. In March 2020, we had the pandemic lockdown. Indoor dining was prohibited with the mayor's safer at home order. Restaurants then spent four months adjusting budgets and outreach to accommodate a takeout only business model, not to mention supply chain woes. June 2020, the city passes an outdoor dining ordinance. With indoor dining still prohibited, the city threw the restaurant industry a lifeline by permitting restaurant dining to take place at sidewalk cafes, streeteries, private lots, and streets and uh, street enclosures. They all required a permit and were fast-tracked to stem the tide of crisis for the industry. Permits for this extended through 2020. In November of 2020, indoor dining was again briefly halted and the outdoor dining permits were extended once more through the end of 2021. September 2021, the bill was proposed by Councilman Dom, authorizing streeteries in Center City, University City, and other business districts like Fishtown, Old City, East Passyunk, Northern Liberties, Maniunk, the entire third council district, Spring Garden, Fairmount Avenue, and Germantown Avenue. I'm sure I didn't name them all, but you get the idea. So Councilman Dom, I'd like to start with you. You sponsored the legislation. Can you tell me why? Was it an observation? Was it what you were hearing from constituents? What led to uh, the call for action? Thank you, Eleanor, and thank you to your team for really being a tremendous leader and uh, reaching out to us whenever you have issues in your neighborhood. And uh, we appreciate that. And you're doing a great job and so is your team. So and also, I just wanna mention Councilman Squilla, happy to join you in his district, does a great job. One of my favorite council members. And Rich Montanero also does a great job. He's here from the streets department. And Mike Harris, good to see you on South Street and appreciate all you're doing. So here's what occurred. In April, we heard from a lot of restaurants Aaron Sandemore, my chief of staff, who's on this call tonight, formed with me a hospitality group where we got all these restaurants together, hotels, and catering people who were really out of business, flat out of business. This was April of 2020. And we started going on Zoom and forming these calls to find out from them what could we do to be of help to the restaurants, catering people, and hotels. And they came up with the ideas. We had over 75 people on this call. They are the ones who had the ideas of we need the ability to continue to keep our restaurants open with outdoor seating, outdoor, uh, outdoor uh, dining, and giving us the ability to keep people employed. And keep in mind, when you talk about employees and hospitality, the majority, I'd say over 90%, are Philadelphia residents. So it's extremely important that we keep employment in that marketplace. So this is how this occurred. And then we went to the uh, streets department with the ideas of the street legislation and they, uh, Streets and l and I did a great job in reviewing it. We had the uh, bill put through, council approved it unanimously, I believe. 
And one of the great parts of the bill was that the, they had to give approval for the licenses. I think it was a three day right of approval, which everyone pretty much complied with. The, I gotta give the administration a lot of credit during the pandemic, getting something approved in three days was pretty amazing. Also taught me a lesson and that is to put time frames in legislation, very important lesson. So um, that extended, uh, I guess for about a year, it was expiring the end of, I think, was it 2020 maybe? We renewed it again, and then we put in the mechanisms for permanency. Just to be clear, and I'll just outline a few of those items, the permanency does not allow any outdoor dining or streeteries in traffic lanes. So you'll see like on 13th Street, you know, a good portion of 13th Street can no longer have outdoor dining. On 18th Street, the west side can't have outdoor dining. And there's other streets, streeteries across the city that cannot have outdoor dining because they were in traffic lanes. I think at one point we had about 835 licenses for this. And my guesstimate is strictly a guess that we may wind up with 200 to 300 at the end of the day, if we're lucky, might even be less because probably half of them were in traffic lanes and a lot of other restaurant tours just took them down and don't need them. But for those that have kept them up, it really is unique for the city. People love them. There's still people who won't eat indoors. And look what's happening now. We're back, back to masks again as of this week. So we still have a ton of people who won't go inside and eat. This gives them the opportunity to still have some fun. And I will say this, during the pandemic, for two years, if you lived in a building that didn't have a balcony or didn't have any outdoor space, I know row homes do, but if you lived in one of these multifamily buildings, the only time you got to take off your mask was sitting outside eating at a restaurant. There was not a lot of fun going on in the city, but restaurants did provide that fun. So I'm hopeful that this will continue long-term I think it changes the city. I do know some suburbanites who actually, um, in spite of the issues with crime, are coming into the city and enjoying the outdoor dining. So I think it's a, a great, a great uh, really lesson that we learned from the pandemic on how to make the city a little different. So that's kind of the overview on the details of the new legislation. I'm gonna leave that to uh, Rich Montanez, but that's the overview. Eleanor, thank you. So you, so thank you, and you, and you, you managed to get the the legislation with with the permanency aspect passed, but then uh, there needed to be some back and forth, and you called a meeting last month to hear about some of those shortcomings. So before we get to Rich, what were some of the the main things that came out of that that meeting with not only restaurants but. Uh, I believe civics were there, neighbors, any, anyone of interest in, in this endeavor. So let me just go back a bit. Originally, the legislation we had proposed was it would be uniform throughout the city where you could have the same rules would apply to everybody. There were some issues in certain council districts that they were concerned. So a compromise was reached and about 65% or so of the city uh, could be uniform and the other 35% would go through their district council members, which you know, we'll live with that. It, it's, it's better to have that than nothing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, but I will say that what happened was when the regulations came out, as much as we had some phone calls with the administration, there were some regulations that were just too onerous, especially for the small little neighborhood restaurants. And so those, that was where that Zoom call occurred about four or five weeks ago where we had everybody on the call discussing those issues. And I'm hopeful that the administration has heard that and will work with us you know, one of them was a $60,000 bond, which is very difficult for a small restaurant to get a $60,000 bond because to get the bond, the insurance people have to underwrite the financial ability of the restaurant to show they have 60,000 of liquid assets, which most don't have. So once we explain that to the administration, I think they're gonna be understanding about that and hopefully they're gonna waive that, but I'll let Rich speak to some of those issues. But I think we're working together and we're trying to get this accomplished in a good way. Thank you very much, Councilman. Sure. And and uh, Rich, as I send it over to you, as, as the Councilman was mentioning, the legislation, of course, was passed. It was written broadly, but with parameters like the operating times, number of seats permitted outside, um, not encroaching on adjacent properties, and of course, uh, not, no more in driving lanes. But again, referring to what Councilman Dom just referenced, there became a question of what was feasible and what was burdensome. So some of those things to mention that if, if we can touch on um, for the look of a streetery, having to go through the art commission, um, where materials ended up landing, what requirements for maintenance, uh, 
propane generators, underground power lines, you know, from at least uh, some of the articles in the paper that kind of caught a lot of people off guard and which is necessary, but um, how will it look? The, the crash guards you know, for the, the, the streeteries that do remain. And then it comes down, I guess, the cost of the permit is, isn't as much as uh, the security bond and, uh, oh no, it's the, it's the cost of applying that isn't expensive, but the cost of the permit combined with the security bond and what that means for removal, that's a lot of stuff, but what are some of the things that you believe have reached compromise? So we did have the hearing in March 16th and we are gathering all the comments. Over a hundred people testified. The law department is gathering all the information. Uh, once that is all transcribed, it will become public knowledge. Uh, we are uh, amending uh, some of the regulations. For example, we are definitely looking at a zero bond. Uh, although the legislation allows the streets department to put a bond, we're currently looking at a zero bond. We are looking at the licensing fee to be comparable to a sidewalk cafe fee. We don't think it should be cheaper to build a streetery or to put take over a parking space or build then rather than to have sidewalk cafes. So, you know, uh, for us, we're trying to encourage sidewalk cafes and they are by right in Center City and UCD uh, and by ordinance in other areas in, in the city of Philadelphia. So those are the things we are weighing in ours. Um, we recently had a couple tragic uh, fires where the fire department has some difficult times fighting the fire because of structure streeteries. Uh, one of them was in the 1500 block of South Street. There's over 85 feet of structure there. The fire department had a terrible time getting the hoses in. Uh, so we're looking at new uh, our regulations on how to assist the fire department do their job, how to make it good for all the businesses. We also heard from other businesses where they don't like their front of their store uh, blocked. <laughs> you know, so you may have a restaurant, but um, I don't know somebody next to you. Uh, shoe store, I don't, I'm trying to guess some of the uh, clothing store, they, they were saying, well, what about me? What about my rights? Um, and so we're taking all that in into consideration. And, and um, as far as the, when it comes to the art commission, it is the art commission's privilege and, and their thing that anything that happens in the public right away needs their approval. Um, and the way to get around this and the way we, we are understanding this, if you're just putting tables and chairs out there, you do not need um, tables, chairs, and umbrellas. You do not need art commission approval. If you're going to build a structure where you're putting signage and all that, that is now triggering art commission. During the temporary ordinance, we were actually bypassing that, that uh, approval process. So the streets department did bypass it, and we're allowed to bypass it in the temporary but that temporary has gone away. Um, the other thing we're looking at, and, and now I'm mentioning this because Mike is in the meeting, is um, the temporary ordinance or the temporary rules to the city allowed us to close streets and for the restaurants to take over. It's to create, we're looking to see we still create those festival streets where restaurants can take over the street on a Saturday or a Sunday, put tables and chairs, uh, you know, invite people uh, if they want to expand their, their footprint, they can. So we're looking at all that to see if that's how we keep the restaurants afloat. And as the council member said, is we're back to wearing masks. So a lot of the restaurants are asking us to please tell us what to do so we can continue going. Um, they, so we, we are trying to rush. Our goal is to have uh, the regulations posted May 1st. It's a Sunday. So May 2nd, I apologize. I believe May 2nd is a Monday. Uh, so we're looking to see if we can have it posted uh, once law approves, on, approves them uh, and they will be public to everyone. So it will be, um, if, they're, if they are published um, May 2nd, then it would be May 12th that it would go ten, into ten effect? 10 days later, they will become law, yes. Okay. And just really quickly, um, what was there any... Uh, did you, was there any landing place for power, be it propane generators, power lines, and about those uh, crash guards? So the crash guards are still there. As you know, we had seven, eight, I believe that were completely crashed. We had 
seven people go to a hospital in one in Northern Liberties. So we are concerned about the safety of our citizens. Uh, crashworthiness is a requirement by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So whether you're doing construction or in this case, you're actually outdoor dining, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania does require you to put crashworthiness out there. So it's not a, a something that the city's forcing. Um, we, we are just enforcing the Commonwealth laws. And, and is it a specific? Is it a specific structure, or is it is it something so, you might see on a highway that's like orange? And and will it also see, apply to places not not building structures? So you do see the barricade. So the regulations do allow, uh, and as the council members have asked uh, for planters. So it does allow for a planter structure to be put in as long as a seal, as an engineer signs and seal the document that this is a crash worthy barrier. Uh, it was, so you need over a thousand pounds. Um, there is a formula, Eleanor, I apologize. I don't have it up top. If it was in my office, I would know it. So I do apologize. Um, what I do always tell council is one of those big orange uh, uh, crash worthy barriers. When we fill it over with, uh, three quarters, which is a little over 600 pounds, you're looking at 1800 pounds of four that it's going to take. So we are concerned. Uh, we, we are looking at other options. We are looking at other cities. San Francisco actually allows planters. Uh, each planters weighs 2000 pounds. So we are, you know, we do understand the aesthetic and, and making it look attractive to customers and all that. And we're willing to accept it, but we do want uh, somebody to look at it. If you submit it to us and expect the streets department to do the calculations, it's going to take us longer. So you got to understand that part that the more we do, the more the more we're doing in house, the longer it's going to take us to do the reviews. When we were fast tracking, as the council member said, we were basically look, do, going down a checklist and doing and approving it based on a checklist. Now we're actually also looking at it in fact liability to the city and things like that. So it's taking us a little, it's gonna take us a little longer to review. But I think people will be uh, much more comfortable that it has to be engineer approved. Is it a city engineer or a private engineer, just engineer approved? The restaurants can hire their own private engineer who signs and seal the drawings to the city and we will review them. That would actually accelerate the approval process. Excellent. And lastly, seasonal permits, is that on the table? So we, we, we put in there, part of the thing was weather, and by us, we meant uh, inclement weather was the winter operations. I believe we talked to council and council is recommending that we keep them here wrong. So we're, we're trying to see how we're gonna work that along with our uh, winter operations. But I think with the restrictions we put in there to allow our plows and our uh, fire trucks and emergency vehicles to go down the street, we may not have an issue. Uh, but we're we're reviewing that, and we want to set up a couple pilots and bring plows in. Our plows are pretty big, so we we want to make sure we're not damaging uh, the restaurants. Excellent. Well, that was a lot of information. I want to thank you so much. I may come back to you, but I do want to um, head over to Councilman Squilla right now because um, under the new law, some restaurants can reapply for their streeteries by right. Um, but already uh, council people are seeking amendments to the boundaries of the business district zones for by right cafe or streetery permitting. Do you have an opinion on expanding um, the head house district zone for permitting at present, Councilman Squilla? Who will probably be joining us shortly. So while we wait for um, him to rejoin, uh, Mike Harris from South Street Headhouse District. I wanted to ask you. Um, oh, I. Hey, Eleanor. Councilman, you're back I with apologize. us. Apologize. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to add. Um, I'll turn around here if that helps. Um, that as this legislation worked through, we did have uh, some concerns with residential areas. Uh, some of the Business Improvement Districts, commercial corridors will be by right, by regulations that the streets come up with. There will be an application process, but the other areas outside that will need an ordinance just like a sidewalk cafe does. And we did plenty of sidewalk cafes in Queens Village and South Street area, um, and they would have community input. And then it would be an ordinance like we did with sidewalk cafes. So they're still possible. 
to have, but it would be input with communities and um, we would have to follow the same process as we do with sidewalk cafes. I just want to make sure that was clear. And then the business improvement districts and commercial corridors will have uh, follow the regulations that are going to be promulgated by the streets department. I, and I maybe I missed it, but did they have a date when that would be completed? For the for the promulgation of the um, regulations yeah. and when they would have to apply for the current streeteries and and or the streeteries that would need an ordinance. Well, if the, if uh, Rich was saying that if they plan to get that out on um, May second, so that would be May twelfth, that it opens up for application. Would that be correct? Yeah, that would be correct. So if, if you could, Councilman, very quickly, the for for applying for the ordinance, could you just refresh us on what what that in, involves for um, a sidewalk cafe outside of the business district? Yeah, they would apply just like they're applying for the uh, sidewalk cafe. You would apply for a streetery. There would be an application through the streets department process. They would have to submit a plan. Once that plan is submitted. Uh, they would need an ordinance to introduce it to um, through council. So if it was in my district, we would then require a meeting with the RCO, whatever RCO is in that area, meet with them, go through the process, show the plans. And then uh, with that approval, we would introduce it. It would get introduced in council and then passed. And it would be the same result as it is now with the sidewalk cafes. Excellent. So but between that and, and the business district already being outlined, there, there aren't any immediate plans to expand the buy right zone, at least in Queen Village? Mm, not unless it's requested by the community that they wanted to expand it. And if, if they wanted it by right, where they could put them at any uh, bar, uh, then um, that, if that's supported by the community, we could then add that to the legislation that it would be a buy right plan. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Councilman. And I will uh, now head it back over to uh, Mike Harris of the South Street Head House District. And Mike, I was going to ask you just how are businesses responding in the district? Are you, what concerns are you hearing and what, what uh, abilities does the legislation or, or, or any other provisions allow you to help support navigate this with, with the business district. As, as soon as you take off mute. Oh, my best, my best words are behind me now. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I said we should defer to Erin because she's been a true champion uh, through this, but I do want to acknowledge Councilman Dom and Councilman Squilla and their leadership on this and, and Rich and Mike Carroll and others at the city. They've been very flexible for these past two years and very responsive. So it's been a, it's been a long process, but it's been a good process. And I would say that, you know, the law that passed and went into effect in January that, that set the regulations or, or set the, the law and set South Street as one of the uh, by right areas was really helpful, really great. Um, we also, I'll just say with other bids, at least 10 other bids around the city signed on, you know, did testimony on May, March 16th and, and signed on to Councilman Dom's letter for suggested changes to the regulations. Um, so it's been really a, a cohesive effort to that end. I would say that uh, right now we're sort of in a limbo period uh, because I've said at, at, at our board meetings and to the, the community, you know, the law, the code is the code. It's in effect, uh, you know, and they need to adhere to that. But we're still kind of waiting for the these regulations, the modified regulations, and then we'll have a clearer path going forward. I would say that I would agree with Councilman Dom that probably my guess, just based on the code, is about 50% of our streeteries won't, won't be there. There are about 20, 20 streeteries on South Street, and I expect by the end of it, given many of the highway regulations and restrictions that will be probably in the area of 10 when all is said and done. But um, I think what we're looking forward to is um, May 2nd, <laughs> you know, 
And so there, there's a clear path so people can have an idea of how to proceed from here. But uh, uh, all that to say that they, the streeteries are really important. Uh, they've, they've been a great lifeline. I know that's said a lot, but it really is true, especially as the weather's heating up. And, and you know, a beautiful day like this is a day you want to be out dining outside. So uh, I think the, the quicker we get clarity and process for the businesses to um, make their applications and know how to move forward, uh, you know, the better it will be. But we're we're thrilled that we're part of the uh, buy right area. And um, and that that saves a lot. That saves time and effort for sure. Thank you very much, Mike. And, and before I go to uh, check out some questions, I do want to uh, throw it to Aaron Santamore, who has been a champion, a resource, um, an encyclopedia, and always picks up the phone to answer questions. Um, I just want to get your 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 thoughts, your input after almost what two years of working on this, or or it, from when it was first germinated. How is it to see this um, so close to the finish line? Um, it's been a really long journey. You know, when we were hosting those initial calls, um, I mentioned to a bunch of restaurants and Mike was probably on those calls. He's been engaged since the beginning. Um, you know, I've laughed with people. I've cried with people. Um, it has been an insane two years and um everybody's done a really good job. I think from the public sector side of things, Rich has put up with my advocacy for twinkle lights everywhere in the city to make these beautiful. Um, I think as we go forward, there's a great group of people who are engaged on design and how these look and feel so that people enjoy them going forward. It is called outdoor dining. I'll just say this because it wasn't mentioned yet. Um, it is called outdoor dining. So you should feel like you're outside this like, Containment container structures are probably something we'll try to move away from because um, we want you to feel like you are um, outside. We want to see the architecture as Rich mentioned. Um, that's important to not just um, the neighboring properties, but to people walking around. We want them to see the city, its beauty, its glory. Um, we want them to feel like this is a vibrant um, addition to the city of Philadelphia. And this really is a great opportunity for us to have an urban setting feel like a welcoming space for anybody and everybody. So, you know, and I know the councilman usually says this, um, but these are now anchor um, businesses in a lot of our corridors and in a lot of our neighborhoods. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the call feels this way, but I'll go to a new neighborhood I don't normally go to for food. I'm not sure I would go to a CVS or something else in that neighborhood, but I'll go for food and I might stay at the CVS or the other local shop that might be nearby. Um, and, and those are great economic drivers for a lot of our neighborhood corridors. So I just wanted to mention that we have a lot of work to do. There'll be some bumps along the road. I'm sure we will hear from all the constituents on this call, um, what we're doing well, what we're not doing well. And, you know, it's going to be a progress, not perfection kind of thing. And um, hopefully everybody gets to enjoy it though. Well, thank you very much, Erin. And it, it is nice to know that looking back at this, that it has been um, a thorough process with back and forth and um, compromises and edits and a lot of uh, investment in, in the vibrancy of our, our food scene here in Philadelphia. Um, I'm going to get to uh, just a couple of questions. The first one's from Norm Whistler, who asked, will bars and restaurants be allowed to operate remote operations? And if so, what are the rules? Norm, I just want to let you know that was our community meeting last month on the um, the uh, the new Act 81 to the liquor, the liquor laws, which do allow for catering licenses, and it does allow for um, extension of premises uh, up to two blocks away. I invite you to look at that recording on qvna.org. Um, Greg Doms asks, will the sidewalk cafe applications be pu published in atlas.gov? And um, I'm not sure who would handle that question or if we have to get back I, to that I will one. check with L&I. Um, sidewalk cafe, not applications, but the licenses are given by uh, license and inspection. So, I will ask them if they're publishing them in, uh, on Atlas. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we do have um, a, an anonymous question um, says, as a direct neighbor of a bar that is a streetery in Queen Village, what consideration has been given to the quality of streeteries? Some of the streeteries in QV are made of string and chewing gum or kegs and two by four tarps. Others are very well constructed, thoughtfully designed using quality materials. The more poorly constructed streeteries are going to heed the effect on home values and perception of our neighborhood. We're all sympathetic to what restaurants went through in COVID, but before they are allowed to basically add permanent additional rooms, there should be some basic requirements for materials. And I think we started to talk about materials, but I don't know if we got into specifics. Is that still being um, hammered out, Rich? Uh, yeah, so some of the, uh, for example, Councilman Alan Dom is very strong in, um, you know, for the streets department to pick three so-called uh, options where you can pick, you know, if you submit that, it kind of streamlines your application process where, where it basically dictates the material, building structure, things like that, similar to our parklet program. We do have three parklets that are currently approved. We are looking to basically copy that program and bring it over to the streetery. So you'll be able to use uh, all our parklets are actually the base of steel. So it can withstand the, the, the weather, uh, you know, rain, snow, salt. Uh, they do got to get inspected on an annual basis. The salt does tend to corrode the steel and they got to be make sure you're well painted. We have removed some of these streeteries. I don't disagree with the uh, writer. Uh, we, they've fallen apart on us. Uh, because they're just, uh, you know, they, they're not, they were not made to take the weather as, as they are, but we are looking at things. And, and as far as the aesthetics and all that, that is why the art commission is on board. Uh, I'm not an artist. I don't pretend to be, nor am I an ar architect. I'm an engineer. So they are actually the ones reviewing it from that point of view, from aesthetics, how it fits in a community and things like that. And, and to that point, because um, there's a follow-up question that has to deal with enforcement, enforcement will begin after the regulations are made public, we're hoping May 2nd, so then enforcement will begin 10 days after that when the application process starts or when the applications are confirmed, the permit. We will begin with education. We, when we started the temporary program, we actually probably educated two or three times several restaurants all together. I believe it was um, a little over 800 uh, flyers that uh, education flyers that we handed out um, at, to educate the, th the, the businesses, but we will begin with education. Uh, if we constantly keep coming back, then yes, we will then start citing and eventually uh, ask LNI to remove the license. So, uh, but the way it works is any citizen can also call you can call 311, you can call the council members on the call. Uh, the streets department will come out, take a look at the establishment and then uh, it either, the first thing we usually do is we try to talk to them. We do not want businesses to go out of business in the city of Philadelphia. So we will talk to them, but if we constantly keep coming back and it becomes a nuisance, there is a nuisance law in the bill, your license will not be renewed. Eleanor, if I, could, if I could follow up on Rich just real quick on that same issue. We have, just so you know, uh, you know, first of all, I don't think string and chewing gum is one of the three models Rich is going to propose, <laughs> but uh, maybe, who knows. Um, a, but we have basically said to our businesses that look at the look at the city code, you know, for the most part, you're already not, you know, you have to be compliant with the city code. That's the law as it stands now. So we kind of let the lead the expectation that you're most likely going to have to start over. You know, you're going to have to sort of take down what you've got, comply with the new regulations, with the code. There's going to be a new application process. So we've sort of been laying that groundwork of you've really got to step up your game by taking down what's there, you know, and uh, and rethinking and relooking at what's what you've got. And that's sort of the message we've been doing as the bid to our streeteries. So your education process has begun, just as, as, as Rich was saying, as, as educating that, that this are going to be the expectations, that it's, that it's only a matter of time before, before this is not, <laughs> yeah. the education I, ends and, and, and maybe, maybe uh, violations start. Yeah, we're Eleanor, just kind of forewarning. 
Yeah, I mean, actually, a couple complaints we got on South Street. We actually, I actually called Mike first before I sent our people through. And Mike went and talked to them, and they actually got their act straight before we showed up. So in essence, he did the education, and we didn't have to do anything. And by the time we showed up, they were back in compliance. That's good. That's good to hear because there is another question. Is it legal for streeteries to block the crosswalk like Patty Wax does at 2nd and South? No. And as the council member has told you, there are setbacks from all that, including crosswalk stop signs, um, signals, I forget, uh, travel lanes. So uh, I believe Councilman Alan Dom mentioned that, that there are some setbacks and that's why he sees some of these. And that was one of the concerns we had. I'm sorry, go Fire ahead. hydrants. Fire hydrants, yes. So exactly. we, it, the council built it into the, the ordinance that you cannot block any of these. Excellent, excellent. I'm seeing if there are any more. Um, um, I, want to, I want to mention something. Yes, please, please. I just want to say that, you know, here's an example. We have. Rich Montanez, working for the city, Deputy Commissioner, Streets Department. What a great job he's been doing. Really, mm -hmm. when you think about it, he, he's helped us tremendously get through this. We owe him a debt of gratitude. Uh, we have a lot of great city employees, but he's just one of them that really shines. I just want to call him out for that because just watching and listening to him on this meeting tonight makes me very proud. So, Rich, keep up the good work. You make us look good. Thank you very much. <laughs> just remember this when, when I'm in front of you for budget. <laughs> <laughs> I have a short memory. <laughs> well, we Mark, second to say something, Mark. No, I was wondering. I was wondering what he wanted from you next. So I think he's being nice until the regulations are done. I'm not sure. Well, there's a there's a lot of good information here, and it's it's to to go back to Aaron. It is it is a work of prog in progress. It's going to um it's going to take education, it's going to take enforcement, 311 reports, communicating with the neighbor association, um, doing what we can to, to talk to businesses, to educate businesses, to, to educate everybody about this process. We'll definitely look um, forward to May 2nd and then again, May 12th. And I wanna um, ask anybody if you have any closing comments. I just want to say, I mean, and I've been looking through the comments, if anybody feels like uh, you have a nuisance business or anything, let us know by calling 311. We will come out, take a look at it. Uh, and or both council members here, their offices always tell us to, you know, the nuisance issues and we do go address them. So uh, we're here to listen and we are going to start the enforcement uh, periods now. More education. I, I got to educate first and then we'll enforce. We don't want the businesses going out of business. Excellent. Well, I want to thank everybody very much. Oh, no. Thank you. To I have something. Can I add something to that? Yes. Um, I just want to say that, as you said, and Aaron said, it is a work in progress, but I will say this. I think it makes the city exciting. I think it gives us uh, a leg up on everybody else. I think we've done a great job with outdoor dining. There have been hiccups along the way. No question about it. But it's exciting to see people enjoying themselves, especially eating outside. That's the difference between living in Philadelphia and living out in the suburbs where you can't get that kind of feeling. So we need to keep doing things that make Philadelphia strong, better than everywhere else and making it the best it can be. So I think this is one thing that is a work in progress, but it'll be really great for the city. Um, I'm going to... I think there was something, there, somebody had a question or... Yes, I'm, I'm trying to see. See, well, this this question is starting to pinpoint specific businesses, which with where we were going tonight. Well, we um, could have that. You know what? You could it, forward that information to us. Um, mm -hmm. The specific business information. We'll work with streets to to look at those and see how we could either get them to comply or or, or work with uh, the community on those concerns. Um, uh, there are challenges out there. Some of these people do know they're not educated on it. Some of them don't know or some of them do know and decide not to follow it. So there's a lot of different things going on. But once I think the city gets our act together and hopefully it's not that much longer, uh, we'll have an, all the information that we could do, maybe a frequently asked questions or a, um, something that we could post so everybody could know exactly what it is 
that you should be looking for and what how we address those concerns. Excellent, excellent. I will do, I will forward those over to you, Councilman. Thank you so much. And um, if that is it, I want to say very much thank you to Councilman Mark Squilla and Alan Dom. I also thank you, Deputy Commissioner Montanez and Mike Harris, my neighbor from South Street Head House District. Give our thanks to to Aaron Santamore. I appreciate all the information. Again, this recording will be available on the QVNA home site. And I want to thank you all very much. And we'll see you again next month. One thing, one more other thing, Eleanor. I want to thank Rich Montanez also. I mean, he didn't have to jump on here, but his information is key to understanding, to have everybody understand this process. And so I want to thank Rich and the Streets Department for continuing to work on this uh, together with us. I appreciate it. And, and you, I'll Eleanor, too, for bringing it. <laughs> thank you. And I'll jump in on that, too, because now you're on speed dial, Rich, with everything and all things street. So thank you. Thank you for making yourself available. It's I'm just good. representing the group that put all this together. That's all. There's a whole <laughs> team behind me that did this. Well, thank you. Thank you all. And thank you, everyone who joined us tonight uh, from the neighborhood and beyond. We will see you again in May. Have a good evening. Thank you.